Hello everyone, welcome to another It's Live live show. I hope we're live, I don't know, I have no idea. Because the first thing we have to do anytime we do one of these stupid things is find out whether or not you can actually see or hear anything. So we have to stop, we have to stop and I have to go to the comments and see if you're seeing and hearing anything at all. Anything at all, just a little, a little signal from anybody. A little comment saying yes we can hear you and we can see you would be just lovely. Oh, it would be so great. I have so many things to pack into this episode. It's ridiculous. Uh, so hopefully I get the sign from somebody soon, anybody. I'm seeing woos and sound and video are good. Thank you, Dave, so much. Whew. Somehow we're gonna, you know, we're gonna figure out a better system for this. I don't know what it is because I haven't really figured much of anything about how this live stuff works. But we're gonna jump in. Like I said, it's a very packed show. Thank you all so much for being here and hopefully you don't regret it. So let's begin by saying, first of all, this is a bi-weekly show, except that most of the time it isn't. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to be. That's the idea. Sometimes it's weekly, but it's meant to be bi-weekly. Sometimes it's tri-weekly, but the aim is for it to be bi-weekly. So assuming that that is true, then that means the next live show will be, I have it written down here, April 29th. You'll be back here again, or maybe never back here again for another live show, depending on how you feel about it, on April 29th. Okay. The other thing I want to mention to you quickly is there will be a questions and answers portion to this episode, but I've got a bunch of things scheduled for it. Don't worry, I will answer questions, but if you want to get your questions kind of queued up, you can. Here's how you ask them during one of our live streams. You write them like this in the uh, comments. So question in all caps and then follow that with your question. The reason to put it in this format is so that I can more easily find it amongst the chat. And because I want you guys talking to each other and enjoying yourselves, but when I'm looking for questions, this makes it easy, it makes them pop out. You can also do a super chat if you'd like to support the show. We always love those as well, and that will help them pop out. And Luke, very kindly, is monitoring the chat today and is going to help me curate and find those as well. So hopefully, between the two of us, we can get to some of your questions before this is over. Okay, I've got something I'm really excited about that I want to show you. So let me see if I can cue this up here. Uh, this is something that just kind of blew my mind recently. Let me see if I can bring this up. Hopefully, hopefully right now, you are seeing uh, uh, the Board Game Geek website. And on that website, hopefully you're seeing the Watch It Played Games Geek List. So geek lists are ways you can organize collections of games. Maybe you want to list your favorite games. You could put, make a geek list and identify the games there. Or maybe you want to list your favorite designers. Whatever you want. Like maybe your favorite games for a party. Whatever the case may be, you can create geek lists here. Andrew, unbeknownst to me, compiled this comprehensive geek list of not just the Watch It Play tutorials, but I think pretty much every single video that has ever come from this channel <laughs> is collected here. Let me show you, and at the very top here it says the official unofficial guide to Watch It Played videos. Yeah, I mean it's basic, I mean this is as official as it's going to get. And uh, I'm just gonna say it now, and I'm gonna keep saying it throughout this. Andrew, thank you so much. This is incredible, incredible work. So every single one of these entries, you have to identify it with some kind of a game. So he tried to pick games when they weren't a game-specific video that kind of went with it. So <laughs> this is the game called It's News to Me. And this is all of the news videos we've ever done on the channel since 2011, all the way through, organized by month, as you can see here. I mean, we've got classics here from 2012, October's UK Fluffies Are Sticky news episode. <laughs> Everyone remembers that one, right? Well, if you don't, no problem. You can go here and you can watch it. Uh, just So all the news listed here, all the way up till, well, 2019. I haven't done a, a news and updates video in forever, so I, this has reminded me I need to do one soon. I mean, I try to cover the news in these live shows, but there's probably some things that would go well there. He's organized all the Watch It Played fundraisers once. <laughs> this is under the Game Lemonade stand. We've got the show and tell for where I talked about did some product previews. So those are all listed here. He's got the, this is incredible, look at this. He's got the BGG store previews. Every promo preview I've done for the BGG store, and he's listed the individual items in there with clickable links if you wanna to go to the store and pick up that item. And these are the affiliate links, so anything you pick up actually supports the show as well. So, wow. Um, and again, keep in mind, I didn't ask Andrew to do any of this. He generously, generously gave up a bunch of his time to create this convention coverage. And of course, there's, there's all the table talks with the associated table talk back beside them. We got the, the one pep talk we did, tabletop showcase, 
the live videos, like the ones we're doing here. There's going to be a little entry uh, pop in here for this live show eventually. We've got hidden videos. That's right, videos on the channel that maybe you don't even know about because they're not public <laughs> while they're here. Uh, and then some random videos. And then here we start, Mansions of Madness, first edition. These are the videos actually from the Rodney J. Smith YouTube channel before we started over here on the Watch It Play channel with Wrath of a Shardalon. And they just go and go and go. Andrew, amazing, amazing job. This is going to be, I hope, really helpful to people who want to know what games that we've covered on the channel. If they're looking for them, it's helpful for me. Sometimes people will ask for something. And it's not too hard for me to find a tutorial video, but some of the other more obscure things can be hard to find. Even just try to remember, what table talks have I done? <laughs> this is just incredible, incredible work. Andrew, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amazing, amazing. Okay, um, so that's, and I'll put a, I have a link to this geek list, not only in the description of this live show, but also in the description of all of our future tutorial videos and other content in the future. So if you're ever looking for this, just find a, a recent video and you'll find that geek list. Or you can subscribe to the geek list. I probably should have shown you how to do that. Uh, let me uh, just quickly show you that and then we'll jump on to the next thing. Uh, do I know how to do this? Let's find out. Boink. Okay, so I think you can subscribe whoop, 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 uh, right here. This little button right here will subscribe you to the geek list. So when new things get popped in there, you'll get a little notification. Awesome, awesome stuff. Okay, so we are back to uh, the next item. And the next item is what? I've got a list here to keep me on track. Oh yeah, I, I have to talk about our, our wonderful sponsor for the live show. You might not have heard about this, but in the last episode, I announced that we do have uh, a sponsor for these live shows, which is wonderful to have. Let me show you a little bit of information. This is on, uh, hopefully this is gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. What you should be seeing right now is a sponsor banner on the bottom, me in a little corner, and uh, some, uh, a, a game that I have going right now on Board Game Arena. So this is a sponsorship they're doing. I think this is kind of a timely sponsorship right now, especially with the uh, COVID-19 and people being in isolation, not able to get together with game groups. Board Game Arena is a place you can go to play a number of games remotely. And so it sets up the game for you. It, it tracks the turns that you're taking. It will notify your partner. Like right here, now this is, just, I'd finished a game recently of Seasons. And uh, I'm currently playing one right now with uh, Joel Lady from Drive Through Games. So you can see here, we're kind of mid, we're just, we're just really beginning. I've played a, a great card here. Um, <laughs> actually, I'll just take a turn here. And I'll show you how this works. If, you've, if you don't know how to play Seasons, we do have a tutorial video for that as well. I think, I'm actually gonna use this card here. I'm gonna sacrifice it to gain five energy. So it's gonna let me pick what energy I want. I wanna get the energy that's gonna help me fuel and pay for this card here. Uh, let's see, I picked two of them. What else do I want? Um, probably a little fire, cause that's coming later. One more fire, one, and then one more, there, like that. So I've picked my items, I can end my turn, but I'm not gonna end my turn, I'm gonna play this card now. Boom, I just played that card. This card is gonna let me, and so if you, if you hover over it, you can see an enlarged version of it. And that's what I'm seeing here. And also there's a text version printed just above it. So you don't even have to read the card art if you don't want to. It says to take two energy tokens. Oh, Joel, you are in trouble. I'm getting even more energy. I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna take that one. And I could play this card, I will. Oh, I don't have enough crystals. I don't have enough crystals to summon this one, I can't. Okay, Joel, you're, you're lucky. So I'll end my turn and it will pass this over to Joel. And I can go to, oh, it's let me pick uh, another die. I want, <laughs> Isn't this fun watching me play a game here on the stream? Okay, so I can go to another table. Him and I are currently in a game of, of Jaipur, just to show you this. Oh gosh, um, wow, there's silver here I could take, but I don't have room in my hand. I'm going to sell this silver. Boom, get a whole bunch of points. And so you can see, if you're familiar with the games, they're very easy. The interface here is, is very straightforward. But if you're not familiar with the games, you can also go on the game selection part of the website itself and then you can see the rules to the games as well. So thank you Board Game Arena for hosting this or helping to sponsor the, the live show. And I do recommend you check this out. If, it's, if you wanna play some games online, this is a great place to be able to do it. So um, thank you again, uh, Board Game Arena, and let's switch back over to the next thing that we're gonna talk about in this live show. What is it? I need to look at my list. Oh, I've got, I've got questions from you. So we have a, um, a Board Game Geek Guild. Uh, the Watch It Play Board Game Geek Guild. There'll be a link to it in the description below, hopefully. <laughs> and you can also ask questions there if you subscribe, because I will usually announce in advance that I'm doing a live show and people can preload some questions for me there. I have one here from Alexandra Roberge. And he's asking, or she's asking, what games would you recommend for Skype play 
if only one person has a copy? Now, this is an interesting question. And I know there was a little bit more to the question. Specifically, it said, I know about Board Game Arena and other options, but what if I want to play with my physical copy? Uh, what are some suggestions? Well, I have a couple suggestions for you. Uh, one of them is Mansions of Madness. As long as one person has the copy, they can set up uh, the entire board on the table and hopefully you know, you've got a camera that can sort of point at the, at the table and show people where things are located. Because then effectively people can just say what they want to do and then you would move their piece around the mansion, explore and take the actions for them. So I think that game would work quite well. Again, a bit of a table surface, you've got to take that into consideration in the kind of equipment you have. Uh, Bus is a game that I just did recently, uh, a tutorial for. That one would work. Games that don't have hidden information where people have to hold cards in their hand, uh, I think that's probably a big limiting factor. If you want to do it in, in, in a format where someone's got the game, the physical game on the table, and everyone else is just sort of watching and participating. Just one. You can also do just one. Now, just one came, comes with the templates or the plates that you would write your answers on, but you could just have people at home write their answers on a piece of paper as long as, oh, I'm just realizing there is, uh, there is a problem there. The problem is that the deck of questions uh, or the words would only be with one person. So you might have to modify the play there a little bit. Or you have everyone close their eyes and the person with the deck holds it up so that person can see it. Maybe, I don't know, maybe that one doesn't work. <laughs> what do I know? Uh, solo games can also work as well. Anything you can play solo. And you might say, well, what's the point of having someone else play? Well, you can sort of cooperatively play solo, right? You can discuss strategies and ideas and things that you would, you would like to do. I actually have another game right here with me right now that I think could also work for this. It's a game called Box of Rocks. Uh, actually, I think the BGG name is Are You Dumber Than a Box of Rocks, which is not, um, not very nice. But it is a box of rocks with a trivia game attached to it. And I would love to I could actually show this to you right now. But I, I, it would be helpful actually to have someone here. I just don't, I don't have anyone here that I could, you know, potentially have come on the show. Oddly, I, hold on, I'm getting some kind of notification. I, did you hear that? Did you hear a ring? I, I think I'm hearing something. Let me, uh, hold on. My uh, I had a hotline down here and the light was flashing and I think I'm actually getting, uh, getting a call. Uh, Hello? Oh, is this, hold on. Is this, uh, is this Chess Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise? Yes, are you, are, are you yeah, that? I'm sorry, I the connection, this through? is an old phone. You gotta understand, it's a very old phone. Uh, I know, yeah, I'm surprised, I, I'm, I'm glad you finally picked up. I'm so, oh man, I, I've been meaning to get a hold of you. I got, I got, so, I got some questions I need, I need your help with. Well, uh, th th this is, this is fantastic timing because I actually have questions that I want to ask you. Uh, I've got this game here, Box of Rocks, and I'd love to play it with you. Um, you know you're on the live show, though, right now, right? Are you, are you okay with that? Oh, uh, wit witnesses. Um, okay, yeah, this, this, this could work. Oh. Uh, yeah, let, let's play your okay. game. Okay, sure. I'm, yes. I'm glad you're up for it. Look, I'm just going to put you on speaker, because that's how okay. this works. <laughs> All right, so I've got, I've got the, uh, the, the deck of questions here. Uh, Chaz, I'm going to explain how this game works to you and everyone following along. You can actually kind of play along with us as well. Okay. The game comes with this whole deck of cards, all kinds of trivia questions. There's three on each one. The person reading the questions can just pick any one they want, really. I, I got one here for you, okay? Uh, Chaz, the question is, uh -huh. the number of Central American countries that do not border the Caribbean Sea. Okay? Now, just so you know, the answer will always be zero, one, or two. Now I'm gonna let you think about this one. Okay. Because see, in the okay. box, there's a bunch of rocks. Uh -huh. There's a blank rock like this. It's got nothing on either side. And then there's two other rocks, and each of those have like a little hash mark like this on it, okay? So I'm mm -hmm. gonna shuffle mm -hmm. up the box, and it's gonna come up with an answer as well, and we're gonna see whether you or the box of rocks is correct. So do you want me to read that question for you again? Yeah, sure, I do. You know, you know I, I got a trivia question for you first, though. Um, just, you know, just get us, get us warmed up. Um, <laughs> okay, I guess that's fair. Exactly how tall would you say your driver's license says you that you are? My driver's license? Well, I mean, it would say, say what my actual height is. Uh, I'm six foot one, Jazz. Six foot... Six foot one. Yeah, six foot one. Yeah, that should, that should work. Um, oh, okay, um, that's, you know what? If... 
if we want to double check your work, you are welcome to send me a copy of that driver's license and I'll make sure to get you your points. Okay, um, I will do that. Okay, okay, so the question was, the number of Central American countries that did not border the Caribbean Sea, or the Caribbean Sea, I never know how to say it. So, Oh, oh, wait, no, this is perfect, because um, I've actually been looking at getting out of the country. Um, so I believe that I just looked into this, and I, I think it's two. The answer, I you think, think the answer is two. Well, let's see what two. the Box of Rocks thinks, shall we? The Box of Rocks yeah. thinks the answer is zero. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so let's let's find out. Well, it turns out the answer is El Salvador is the only Central American country not bordering the Caribbean Caribbean Sea. So El Salvador, you're both wrong. <laughs> I don't. They don't have an extradition treaty with the U.S., do they? I really have uh, no hey, idea. What, what, as a Canadian, okay. But you know what? Here's a here's here's a better question. Okay. Here's a better question. Um. You know, we've been in quarantine and doing social distancing and everything. So would you say that due to those things, over the past couple of weeks, you there's no really anybody that you know that could verify that could vouch for your whereabouts over the last couple of weeks? Well, yeah, most people, I mean my family is here obviously in the house. Oh. But oh, yeah. but I mean I suppose yeah. when I was when I was quarantined, they were um you know, in a separate part of the house. I was in a separate part of the house. So I guess, no, there'd be like large gaps of time where people could not have, uh, would not have known necessarily where I was. Oh my, Chaz, I'm losing you. Chaz, are oh, you there? sorry. I'm losing you. Yeah. You've disappeared oh, off the sorry. screen. S say something. Oh, I shouldn't. I, I'm here. Yeah, you're I'm, definitely uh, here. I can, but visually yes. you're gone. <laughs> Our technology oh. is failing us. Let me, let me see if I can get uh, you back. I, <laughs> I can, I can hear I you. But the video features on this phone seem to have yeah. oddly stopped working. Here, uh, oh, 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 you're you're back, sort of. Okay, let me let me see if I can. Uh, this is <laughs> this is very strange. Okay, that's it's what happens when you call into a phone from 1985. Uh, look, here, hold on, hold on. Uh, let me just see if I can. Uh, this is this is par for the course around here, so no one's going to be surprised. Uh, I'm, okay, <laughs> just. Okay. I'm doing some some live tech calling here. Uh, all right, just hang in there. We're gonna have this any second now. All right. Okay. I think I think we're sort of back. I don't, I don't know. Maybe. All right. What was what was going on here? I was asking. I was gonna ask you a question. Yes. Were you gonna ask you me a question? What happened? Me, you we were you were you were in the middle of this rock. Oh game. yeah yeah the rock game right um, right right. Yeah. Okay okay here I got a question for you. Uh, the number of married couples who have flown together in space. Oh, do you think they're still booking people? Um, I don't know. Let, let's say uh, two. Two? Okay, two. well, here. Let's, let's see what the... Uh, oh, my gosh. You've gone funny looking again. I'm gonna, I, I, I got, got to fix your screen. <laughs> one second. It's, oh, boy. Oh, boy, Chess. This is, this, is, this is very concerning. Oh, oh man. Have you had anything you know, weird happen you with your phone line me. lately or your internet line? Like anyone like messing with it? It might be tapped, um, maybe, okay. but um, I'm not, I'm being able to conclusively uh, demonstrate okay. that. Okay, let's get see what the Box uh, of Rocks says here. Okay, so the number of married couples, okay. the Box of Rocks thinks, is zero. No married couples. The, the, the Box oh, of Rocks has got a one-track mind, always zeros. It says here, actually, no, there was one. How, what was your answer? Uh, well, yeah, I think it was one. Okay, well, it, it was... married couple <laughs> Jan Davis and Mark Lee flew aboard the Endeavour Space Shuttle from September 12th to 20th, 1992. So we're gonna give you a point. So this is the point track here for the human player. You're gonna go up one point. Oh, wow. All you need is three points to win okay. to prove that you're oh. not dumber than the box of rocks. Okay, okay. I have got oh. uh, another question here. Oh, okay, excellent. You know, this game though, you, um, do you shuffle up the rocks before each question like that? Yeah, yeah, you gotta, so, you gotta like grab it and shake it. So, hey, can you do me a favor? After we're done playing this game, could you pick up that box and give it a really good shake? Get your fingertips all over that box, and then ship. Give me, send me a copy of this game. That copy. Send me this copy of that game. That and I'd love to play it. Afterwards. Well, listen. If you're enjoying it that much, I'd be happy to send it to you. Yeah, just make sure it's that one that you're touching all over the box. There, that will be. It's useful. the only copy I have, so no problem. I will, I will do that okay. for you. Don't, don't worry about it. Okay, I've got, um, I've got a question here for okay. you. Okay. This is, uh, let's see here, the number of oceans, uh -huh. let's see, the number of oceans that touch Alaska. The number of, 
Uh, I don't know, four. No, remember the, the answers are for zero, zero, one, or two, so that's not a valid answer. The box of rocks oh. says zero again. <laughs> the box of rocks is dead set on zero. I'm pretty sure that's not true. No, the actual answer is two. So both you and the box of rock, rocks are... Is everything okay over there? It looks like... What's going on? Uh, they're uh, getting ready for a party. Um, yeah, we've got the lights up for a party. In fact, it's a surprise party. And so i got to be quiet. I've got to be very quiet. In fact, you know what? i got to go get ready, which is why I'm, I'm going to go hide under my bed. So I'll just I'll talk, to you. I'll talk, talk to you later. Okay, that was... Um... This is a little odd, um, but hopefully, hopefully you got a good sense of how Box of Rocks works. It's a very simple trivia game. What I like about it, particularly, is that if you're not really good at trivia, which I'm not, you can always make a guess, right? Zero, one, or two. You got a one in three chance of being right. But that also means, so does the Box of Rocks. Although the Box of Rocks today had a very, very one-track mind, it seemed. So, all right, so let's, let's get on to a, uh, another question. I got another, well, actually, let's take a look at some of your questions that maybe you're asking in the chat right now. I'm going to bring up, um, I have a little document here that Luke is preparing for me. Let me just get that on screen here so I can see it as well. And he's, uh, he's been posting <laughs> your questions, which I will try to, to run a few, through a few of these here. Okay, so the first question I've got is, have I been reading any new books lately? Oh, um, uh, there's a, oh, I forgot to hang up the, the, the live the live phone. There we go. Okay, so that's hung up. Um, reading any new books. There's a book by Nick Trost. It's volume three. It's, it's a card magic book. And uh, that's the only thing I've been reading of late, along with, of course, rule books. But I was trying to get reading a few more novels and fiction of late. And uh, that's got stalled out recently. Just, just work and life has, has gotten in the way a little bit. So, no, I haven't really been reading a lot more, uh, a lot more books than I... I would like to be, anyway. What got you into the hobby of gaming? Well, that's a great question. Oh, and I'll mention this to, to Luke, who's, this is his first time monitoring the questions. Luke, if you can, make sure you put the person's name in along with it. So, sorry, some of these questions I won't have the, the names for. What got you into the hobby of gaming? Well, I have told this story a couple of times, so I'll give you the kind of condensed version of it. But I had uh, an older brother and older sister, 16 years difference between us. And uh, they would often play board games with me. Games like Monopoly, uh, careers, if you know that one, which is kind of like from that era of Monopoly and Risk. And so I always enjoyed playing board games. And then I got into Magic the Gathering in high school. And that sort of kept me going for a while, Magic the Gathering. I love the collecting aspect of it. Oh, I should also mention when I was in junior high, this is a, sort of my first real <laughs> entry into the hobby was picking up some war games from Avalon Hill. Games like Empires and Arms and Ambush. These big, grandiose, very complicated rule book system games. But I just couldn't find anyone to play them with me because they were way too, too complicated for most of the people who would want to play games, board games at that time that I knew. But then I found Magic the Gathering and I found a lot of people who wanted to play that. That game was very popular when it first released and grew, I mean, it's still popular today. And after a little break from gaming, I actually discovered Carcassonne and Board Game Geek shortly thereafter and discovered, oh my gosh, there's like loads of games that I've never even heard of before, and they all look really interesting. I'm looking at the pictures, I'm starting to watch some videos. And so Carcassonne really got me back into, I guess, what I would call this current era of gaming, and that would have been in 2008 or 9, maybe? Uh, Arkham Horror came after that, and then it was just, whew, just went uh, deep, deep down that rabbit hole of board gaming. All right. So let's see here. I got a question from Casey Pierce. We'd like to know, do you ever paint any miniatures? Yeah, I do. I mean, not very frequently, uh, but I do paint uh, miniatures. I've done a few 40K miniatures. I've done a few for Age of Sigmar. I don't, have I painted any board game miniatures? Not that I can think of. I have lots of paints. I have lots of paint brushes, but I do have a hard time I don't, I don't tend to prioritize doing it. That's, that's the real problem. I, if I have some hobby time, I tend to dive into a new game and learn how to play it. And that's sort of where I spend most of my hobby time. But every now and then I get a hankering. I just can't fight off and I'll go pick up a miniature and I'll, I'll paint. So yeah, I do, I do a little bit. The Geeky Maker would like to know, how did you get good at teaching people to play games? <laughs> well, I think one of the best teachers 
was being at tables where I saw games being taught maybe not that well. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a delicate way of saying this, which is causing me to have bad grammar. But um, I, I, I watched people trying to understand and learn how to play a game. I could just see their eyes glazing over as whoever was instructing was trying to teach them. And I tried to pay attention to the, the sorts of questions they would ask. What was confusing them? What was losing them in that process? And I think because I had such a sort of deep love for this hobby like many of us do, I wanted to prevent that from happening when I was teaching games. I really didn't want someone to be turned off from the hobby because I didn't take the proper amount of time to explain things carefully and so forth. I mean, the other big uh, help for me is that, um, especially for the tutorial videos, I have a script that I follow, right? I write it out very meticulously. I think about the order of everything. And that does quite a bit of the work in helping me organize and teach. But I'd like to think that even when I teach in person, I bring some of that skill set with me. I do try to prepare a lot in advance. I try to think of the common questions and I try to follow in order. And I also try to make sure I really know the game well before I try to teach it. So hopefully that gives you a sense <laughs> of my process and how I, how I do it. But thank you for the kind words. Very nice of you to say. Wes, uh, Grolmus writes, uh, thanks for all that you do and being the wonderful person that you are, stay, stay super, stay, stay, stay safe. Well, thank you so much, Wes. That's very kind and thank you so much for the super chat. That's very, very nice of you to say. Um, I, uh, I feel very fortunate. I'm able to do a lot of my work in isolation. Unlike a lot of, even my wife, uh, who, who's a pharmacist, you know, she has to be out there a little bit more on the front lines, a little more at risk. And we try to take all the necessary precautions to make sure that we're not potentially going to spread anything, we're going to bring things into our household. But not everyone's as fortunate as we are that way, and uh, certainly the way I am, and uh, I hope all of you out there are staying safe as well. We'd like to see some, some more good, good news as hopefully we see that curve get dampened down a little bit more. Amanda Panda asks, if you had to choose, would you rather be a cat or a bird? Oh, no question, I'd rather be a bird. No question, cats are bizarre creatures, so I would absolutely much rather be a bird. Plus flight. Flight, come on. You'd be able to like travel incredible distances, see the world in such an amazing perspective. Totally would want to be a bird. Jesse uh, Road Heaver asks, ever get tired of explaining how to ask <laughs> questions? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't get tired of it because it's effective. <laughs> when you explain it, it helps people know how to do it, and so it's fine. I'm, I'm happy to, at the beginning of every live show to remind people how to ask questions here. Uh, so Emil has a question. What, if any, long neglected hobby or activity have you found time for at home in these times? I'm going to have a disappointing answer for you. I really haven't found time for other hobbies. Uh, I mean, I think it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. For me, my work schedule hasn't changed in any dramatic sense, really at all. Uh, so my day is still learn game, write script for game, <laughs> you know, shoot the script, edit it, get it out there. You know, it, my, my day to day has not really changed. Um, uh, and so don't feel bad for me that way. That's a, that's a good thing, right? I'm fortunate that way, but um, it means that I don't have a, a fun or interesting answer for that, unfortunately. Uh, Chili Adia asks, you seem to have most of the D&D 5th edition books. Do you play? If so, how is the experience for you? I do have most of them. Actually, in the last live show I talked about that. I, uh, I love the idea of playing role-playing games. But when I have time to play something, I typically will break out a board game because I, I have a better sense of what's involved. Okay, I read this rule book. I can start playing. With a role-playing game, um, the... The burden of the rules overhead uh, intimidates me a little bit, and it's kept me from really diving in. And I know that role-playing games should be treated differently than board games when it comes to rules. It's okay if you don't know the answer to a rules question, make something up, move along, keep the story going, and don't, don't sweat it. You can find out the answer later. People are at the table there to have a good time, to have a story told, to participate in the story. They're not going to be as hung up on the rules issues as long as you're confident. Uh, but I, um, I am a person who's kind of hung up about rules, so I have to get over myself in that area. So I have all the books because I, I think from what I've read of the rules so far, I really like the sound of the system, and I like the world and the artwork and the stories and the lore, and so I enjoy reading and looking at them. But I'm not going to buy any more until I eventually get a game played. I'll tell you that much right now. 
Casey Pearson, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate that. Maybe with some of the super chat money, I'll be able to uh, fix some of the weird issues going on with the, the, the technology here. I don't, I don't know. But, um, so uh, Casey asks, how great is Forgotten Waters? Did you enjoy it? My family loves it. Thanks, Rodney, for all you do. We absolutely love your work. Thank you, Pearson. That's very kind of you to say. Uh, you know, some of you know I don't normally comment on games, give opinions. On the live show, I'm relaxing that a little bit. Yeah, Forgotten Waters is fantastic. I'm really, really excited for that game and excited for Plat Hat Games specifically because they've gone through such a change recently, buying back sort of their business from Asmodee and leaving so much of their catalog behind. Forgotten Waters really needed to be a strong title for them, I'm sure. And I was so excited when I played it and felt like, oh, this is a really good game. Now, the thing is, I only feature games on the channel that I like, even though I don't review in the content itself. So if you see a, a video on the channel, it typically means I've, I've enjoyed something about it. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty great. And I think the, um, the voice, the uh, voice acting in the app is fantastic as well. I'm really excited to try out the, the one and two player rules because the game is advertised as three to seven player. That's why I say in the video it's a three to seven player game, but then mention there are rules included for one and two players because those came later, but I've been hearing good reports about them, that they actually work quite well. Chris Taylor asks, how many takes do you have to do for flipping the cover box either? <laughs> so at the beginning of my tutorial videos, Chris is commenting that yes, I do tend to flip the box and I always catch it. I'm kind of confused by the question, do you doubt that I drop it? That I don't catch it every time? Of course I catch it every time. Perfectly. Every time. I don't know why anyone would doubt that. Strange. Angela McInnes asks, what has been your favorite games that you've played while being stuck at home? Oh, now I have played some games while I've been at home. So what have I played? Well, Forgotten Waters. That's been a lot of fun. Luke and I are working through the Grizzled campaign. It's the Armistice edition of the game, and we are, we've got two missions left, and it has been kicking our butts. <laughs> we had the first few missions went great and we've lost every single one since. But it's, it's been really good. I really like the Grizzled and I think this is an excellent format for it. So if it's a game you haven't played before, we do have a tutorial for the base game, but I'd recommend you dive in and pick up the Armistice Edition. You can still watch the video that we have. It will give you the rules because it uses the same base rules and then just adds some new things on as you go. It's really good. Uh, Christy, Luke and I have also been playing The Crew which is a uh, cooperative trick-taking game and really enjoying that as well. And some other things that I can't really say because of things I'm working on uh, for videos for the future. All right, um, I've answered a few questions. There's more sitting here and I will answer more, but just hold off on questions for a moment because what I want to do now is play a game with you. Well, actually with Luke that you can watch. Hey, Luke. Hopefully he's listening. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't just shatter your ears. I'm gonna have him come down here and join me. And we're gonna play a game that I featured recently on the channel. It's a game called Heist. So if you didn't see our tutorial for that, you can check it out. Uh, you'll, I think, kind of catch the drift of it here as we play, but I'm just gonna move some of these things out of the way. Yes, I hear Luke on his way. And I'm gonna set the game up here. Luke, as you come down, I'm gonna to need to get you to uh, bring a chair around. I will move the Watch It Played uh, live phone uh, to the side here. And let's see, which, which roles do you normally take? I think you're the I lookout and money man, right? Lookout and money man, yeah. Now, yeah. I, I do not unfortunately have a microphone oh for Luke, um, <laughs> but hopefully you can hear Luke. Luke, say hello. Hello? Everyone. Yes. Hopefully you can hear me? Can. Yes, I hope so. Okay, so we've got um, this play mat. I didn't show this in the video because it doesn't come with the game. I believe they do have, they might have some you can get from the website if you'd like, but it does help make it a little easier to see the other sides of the safe. So the idea here, if you haven't seen the videos, we have a safe filled with gold that we're trying to crack into, and there's a whole bunch of money as well. Keep track of that. You're gonna keep track of that? Yes, sir. Yeah, that we can collect if we follow the instructions correctly. And we have all these different items here that we have to pass around, trade, take from each other as we coordinate this crazy heist. So let me uh, just turn this on. All right, quick in, quick out, nobody gets hurt. That's the voice of Rob Davio, by the way. So we're gonna select our roles. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna play this as two people playing all the roles, which I don't necessarily. Well, we don't do level one, right? No. Level two. No. Press level three. Press any button. Let's go to level four. I don't know if I recommend level four for your. Um, no, we need. We sort of need it this way, and yeah. Let's go, money man. Get the explosives. Okay. Hacker, get the goggles. That's me. Goggles. Oh, we got this turned. You're right. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Oh no. 
get the laptop. Here. Now, I don't know who's supposed to have the laptop. Get a million dollars. Oh my god, I dropped one of them. Happy, get the Mac. Okay, that's over to you. Use the laptop. Okay, I guess. You got. Oh, who has it? Yeah. Okay. Get the headset. Uh, headset's right here. Explosive. That's me. Okay, we're doing fine. Look out. Get the gloves. The gloves are here. Pass the flashlight to the hacker. That's me. Use the headset. Grab one. Yes! Okay, we're back on track. Pass the laptop to the money man. Money man? Use the map. Grab one million dollars. Okay. Look out. Get the drill. There. That's me. All right. Explosives. Ooh, the safe opened up. Get the map. Get the map. Explosives. Pass the explosives. Okay. So look out over here. Press your button now. Grab one million dollars. Okay. Use the goggles. Use the goggles. Grab nice. One million dollars. Use the gloves. Grab one. <laughs> it's all on you. Pass the drill to the hacker. Here. Money man, get the flashlight. Hacker, get the goggles. I gotta, I gotta get the goggles. Use the headset. Grab one million dollars. Okay, we're doing good. Okay. We're doing good. You are halfway there. Halfway there. All right. All right. And the goggles. Grab three million dollars. Woo! Pass the drill to the explosives okay. expert. Over there. Uh, yep. Trade the goggles for the flashlight. Uh, over here? Yep. Pass the headset to the money man. Okay. Use the map. Grab three million dollars. Oh, we're, we're going flawless Easy. here, I think. So far. Now, grab three million dollars. You messed up. <laughs> I know. Pretty badly. Use the gloves. Grab three million dollars. Look out. Get the goggles. Pass the gloves to okay. the hat. To the hacker. Trade the gloves for the drill. Uh, okay. Use the laptop. Grab three. Nice, dollars. nice. On the five millions now. Explosives expert. Get the map. Look out. Get the explosives. Pass the flashlight to the explosives expert. Use the gloves and the drill. Be oh. <laughs> that was me. I goofed. Okay, alarm. sorry. One more mistake. The Here's the alarm. Oh. The laptop to the hacker. Oh, I did yours. <laughs> I did yours. I'm not allowed to do that. Trade the headset for the goggles. Oh, you got it just in time. Oh, <laughs> the money comes out. Okay, so we, we did manage to make it. Two mistakes. Wow, okay, so that was... um. We, we've had some practice, just, just so you know. Do you want to try it at, uh, at the highest level? The, what, the five? Yeah, the five. What? Actually, there is a secret level six, but um, that is not unlocked currently. Do you have any gold there? Yeah, I can't yeah. see all the gold, so. I'll start placing them. Yeah. All right, we'll try. Do you want to do level five? Yeah, let's do one level five. Daring. Okay. Very daring. Okay, we'll try not to drop it on the floor this time. Yeah, uh, that was, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I'm sorry. I, things low. I did. All right, quick. Here we go. Quick Right, so we'll select all of them again. Here, I'll put these in my hand. Ooh. They're supposed to be kind of off to the side. Doing fine. Explosives expert. Get yeah. the goggles. Got him. Pass the headset to the hacker. Uh, Use yep. the flashlight. Grab one million nice. dollars. Nice. Use the goggles. Uh, money man. Got it. Get the explosives. Pass money the man. gloves yep. to the money man. Look out. Get the drill. Pass the laptop. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Uh, you got to pass the laptop. Use the explosives. Uh, use the explosives. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> That's all right. Pass the flashlight to the hacker. We're using the table variant. <laughs> okay, so it's a little harder on level five, but uh, you get the idea. So that, that is heist, and so you can play it with up to four people, with everyone having their own role, 
Or if you want, you could play as two players and each of you just have one role. Yeah. Rather than try to do multiple at once but like we were doing. I think it's more chaotic. More it is a little more. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Speaking of chaotic, how is it going monitoring the, uh, the questions up there? Good. Going I think all right? I've caught most of them, yeah. So okay, excellent. Going good. Okay, fantastic. Well, Luke, I'm going to send you back up there back to, do to do that because right. we're going to answer some more, more questions here. <laughs> Thank you, Luke, and thanks all of you for, for joining us for a little, little heist there. Oh, I should mention there's a couple things I want to just talk about quickly. If you'll let me plug a couple of things. So I have got this new poster. It's called the Watch It Played Game Shelf. This is a collaboration with Top Scratch. They do posters like this which lists, it's not 100 <laughs> games. I forget exactly how many games are on here. It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 times 7 games on here. And each one is hidden behind a scratch-off poster. Uh, a little sec segment here. So I actually scratched this one off. I don't want to scratch off the rest and spoil it. But these are games that we have featured here on the channel. So if you'd like to pick up a poster, and then you can scratch off games maybe that match that are on your shelf, or games that you've watched us play, or seen the tutorials for, or whatever you like, really. And uh, proceeds from the sales of these do go to support Watch It Played. And it also comes with this handy dandy tube, which, you know, if you've got a play mat that you need to store in something, there you go, you got a great looking tube for that. <laughs> oh, we also, we now have a Teespring store. This is something new. Let me uh, see if I can bring this up. I think I have it active here. Yeah, this should, this should work. You should be seeing this right now. And so we've got a few different shirts. We've got some mugs. We've got the, the Kurds shirt as well. This is my collaboration with Dragon's Tomb. Uh, and so you can pick these up here. And you'll find these listed at the bottom of every video that we do now. So if you'd li like to pick up and sport some Watch It Played colors, you can do that here. And we'll add some more things over time. If you have recommendations for shirts, feel free to put them in the comments as well, and I'll, I'll keep an eye out for that. But it's something that people have asked for for a while, and I finally, finally, finally have somewhere consistently that you can find them. And you'll again find them listed beneath, beneath every video as well as in the description of the videos if you'd like to check them out. All right, um, let's get on to some more of your questions, shall we? Let's do it. I'll answer some more questions. I have a few more from BGG that we'll also take a look at as well. Just got to see where I, where I was. Uh, okay, I found where I was. I'm going to delete the ones we've already done. All right, so from Hilmar Halbjornsson, sorry if I slaughtered your last name there and your first name, have you tried Jorvik from Stefan Feld? Do you like the chicken worker placement feature it offered? I have not played that one. I do like Stefan Fell games, and I do enjoy trying his games, but that is one I haven't played. Sorry, I can't help with that one. Uh, but a chicken mechanic sounds, <laughs> sounds fun. All right, Chris Taylor, thank you so much for the, uh, the super chat and for the very kind words. I, I really, it means a lot to me that, that, to know that people enjoy the show, maybe even these chaotic live shows. I don't know. I am sweating from that heist game. Oh, um, all right. And uh, yeah, you'd like to meet at a convention? I hope, I hope we get to go to a convention again sometime soon. I think it'll be a little while, probably. My guess is that it'll be, uh, I don't know if we'll see another one this year, really. Uh, that's okay. Eventually, hopefully, we'll be able to go to conventions again and, and life will resume. So in the meantime, we can do things like this and connect in other ways, right? Uh, Augusto Carrillo question, has a question. What does the cap mean? <laughs> is this the return of Rodney the Rapper? Ooh, that might be one of those uh, hidden videos from the uh, geek list we showed earlier. The, um, the hat is because I need a shower. <laughs> I am kind of let myself go a little bit here in, uh, yeah, for the last few days. So that's, that's all that the meaning is behind it. <laughs> I wish the answer was a little sexier. Uh, all right, so Jacob, Jackson asks, when you decide it's time for a game to leave your collection, what factors lead you to that decision? Ooh, interesting question. So when I decide I want to have a game leave my collection, what are the things I consider? Well, I mean, one of the things I consider is how often am I playing the game? That's probably the, it's one of the bigger ones. I, I suppose more than that, though, is the question of how likely do I think I am that I'm going to pick that game up off the shelf again? Because, there, look, to be honest, there's a number of games in my collection, like many of yours, I'm sure, that don't hit the table as frequently as I would like. But as time passes, some of them you start to realize they're on there not because I don't have the time for them, but when I do have the time to play a game, I pick something else over that. And it doesn't mean that the game doesn't have value, isn't good, isn't enjoyable, but you just find that your tastes maybe change or evolve and there's other things you'd rather play. I mean, that's one of the biggest factors. If something new comes into my collection that seems to do something that another game did 
but it does it maybe in a way that's a little more enjoyable, a little more refined, maybe the artwork's nicer, the production's nicer, that will sometimes kick a game out of the collection as well. For example, I no longer have my copy of Mansions of Madness 1st Edition because I think 2nd Edition is far and away a much better version of the game. For me, for me. Somebody else, somebody else might like 1st Edition more, but for me, 2nd Edition is the way to go. All right, <laughs> Kabuki Kid wants to know if I'm hiding the lack of a recent haircut under that hat. Yeah, that's, that's part of it too, for sure. Uh, I do, I could use a, uh, a little bit of a haircut, <laughs> I think, so. Uh, Ashley, Ashley Rhodes uh, offering a little bit of a super chat for the hat. Well, thank you. Maybe I'll have to wear the hat again in the future. Uh, thank you for the support. It really does mean a lot. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ephraim Owen Mazza asks, what is your job before Watch It Played? Well, before Watch It Played, I had a small business called Marlboro Media, which w I, where I built some websites. I did some other video work, did some photography work, just a lot of like little creative but small ventures locally here in the town where I live. And Marlboro Media is a name that I pulled uh, from the street I grew up on. I lived on Marlboro Avenue uh, in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And when I started making videos for fun as a kid, I came up with a production studio name and I called it Marlboro Media. And so I carried that through and made a formal business out of it which I did. Before that, I worked with Health Canada for 10 years. That was my, really my main job before Watch It Played. I was a finance officer there, and I had a little small team of people that I uh, managed, and uh, it was a good job. But uh, when I moved to Prince Edward Island, I left that job behind, and I'm glad I did, really, because now I'm, I'm doing something that I find tremendously fulfilling, because, uh, frankly, because of people like you who watch and enjoy and engage in the, in the videos that I create. So thank you for that. Kabuki Kid would like to know, what TV shows and or movies have you been watching while staying safe at home? We need recommendations. Well, you know, I've been enjoying introducing some movies to Luke that he hasn't seen yet that were kind of influential to me. I had a friend of mine, Dave Finkel, who did one of those, you know, list your 10 most influential whatevers on Facebook, and then everyone's supposed to, like, chain, spread that around, and everyone's supposed to give their 10 most favorite shows, TVs, movies, whatever. And so the one was movies. So I've been kind of going thinking about the movies that were most influential to me, and then introducing those to Luke. And it's been really fun. So one of them, for example, uh, was Brazil. Another one was uh, 12 Monkeys, Primer. Um, yeah, there's been a bunch. TV shows, uh, uh, I'm keeping up with Brooklyn Nine-Nine and Westworld. There's <laughs> quite a spectrum of TV show genres there. That's really all I'm watching that's on TV right now. I haven't been binge watching or backtrack watching anything else. Again. Mainly because I don't really, uh, you know, again, Watch It Played is keeping me plenty busy. Um, so that's, I haven't had a, much more time for, for watching additional television. All right, we got a question here from Jeff Glasgow who asks, how long does it typically take for you to make a Watch It Played video and how many takes do you do it in on average? Oh, I, I film it in sections, right? You'll see a scene switch from one scene to the other and that particular scene might, I might get it in one take, but very frequently it's multiple takes as I try to massage and make sure the wording is the way I want it, and then the act activity of my hands on screen is the way I want it, there's usually like four, five, sometimes 10, 15 takes, depending on how things go for each individual scene. And then with the magic of editing, it looks a lot, a lot smoother than maybe some of the takes, takes did. Actually, someone did ask me a similar type of question in the Board Game Geek Guild for Watch and Play. Let me just bring up a couple of the questions that I had from there, just before I uh, forget to do that. Oh, actually, <laughs> this one here from Ebo Ecclefishon uh, asks, what's a typical week for Watch It Played and Rodney Smith? So uh, a typical week is usually figuring out what tutorial video I'm going to be shooting. I'm going to have to learn that game, and then, of course, uh, I'll talk to the publisher about any rules questions I had. I write a script. The script is based on the rule book and my experience playing the game, so I will rewrite the entire rule book in a format that I think presents the game in a maybe more straightforward manner, particularly for video. Then I will shoot that, and then I will edit that, and then I will post it online for all of you after the publishers had a chance to look it over, make sure there's no potential mistakes that I might have made. And I will also go through the Board Game Geek forums and see what kind of questions people have asked about the game and try to make sure that those get answered in the tutorial video as well. So part of my week is definitely taken up with that production process. I can do one tutorial a week generally, and then there's just also all the other, funny enough, like there's lots of administrative work running a YouTube channel, whether it's like accounting work that has to be done, uh, staying in contact with publishers, planning things that are gonna be coming out in the future, or just working on plans for the future. 
different ideas or initiatives that I might have for the channel. I try to keep evolving the channel over time very slowly. I'm a very slow kind of deliberate person. I like to be very certain of the things that I'm doing before I do them. And, uh, but I'm always, I'm always thinking ahead to the future as well. And then it's, in terms of like the life of Rodney, um, play games with the family. I, I'm trying to learn more magic, magic tricks and uh, that has been sort of a side hobby for me. So when I get little bits of spare time, I'm usually shuffling cards or playing with cards in some way and trying to learn a little something. So if I wanted to show someone a magic trick, I could do it and not feel entirely embarrassed by it. So yeah, that's, uh, that's sort of a day in the, in the, or a week in the life of Rodney. Very summarized, I should say. So Peter Skilton asked, I thought this was kind of an interesting question, would you do a video if a viewer paid you rather than the publisher? So just so it's clear, publishers do hire me for the tutorial videos that I make. This is my full-time work. And uh, I want to work with publishers who want to work with me. Now, I think I should also clarify for people who don't know it, I don't feature any game I don't want to. So if a publisher came to me and they had a bucket of money and said, hey, would you do this game? And I don't want to do the game. I just, I don't. <laughs> so uh, it's an interesting little balancing act because obviously I have to support my family, but I also want this channel to represent the kind of games that I want to share with you, right? And I've been fortunate. There's so many games releasing all the time and my tastes are pretty broad. It's not difficult for me to find games I would like to share with you. Uh, so would I ever do a video if a viewer paid me instead? And there was more to this question. He clarified, you know, as long as it was a good fit for your channel and so forth. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I would. I, I'm so busy right now with my current schedule. Plus, you know, it's, that aspect of it is very much like a business transactional thing. And I don't know if I would really want to develop that kind of relationship with my viewers. Turn it into like a business transaction with you. Uh, I'm happy to manage that part of the business that needs to be run. But I don't know if I want to like have to tie you all up in that part of it, if that makes sense. So I'm not going to say I would never do it, because that's too definitive, but I don't have any plans to currently. Let's, let's just put it that way, I guess. But I thought it was an interesting, interesting question. Never really been asked that before. Rainer uh, asks, what positive changes as a result of COVID-19 do you hope will continue post-pandemic? This is an interesting question. I mean, obviously, we're definitely experiencing some very negative effects, right? And I don't want to make a light of any of that, but it is, uh, there have been some elements of this, this whole thing that do have a tone of positivity to them, I think. You know, uh, I actually wrote down a couple things, so I didn't want to forget them. You know, one of them I've seen is, is there's been certainly talk about a reduction in pollution in our cities. Less people driving, factories shutting down, of course, now that's terrible for lots of reasons, people losing jobs and all that, but there is this sort of other upside where we're seeing less pollution. It'd be wonderful if we could, you know, go back to life as normal, but sort of not be polluting the environment quite so much, right? So that, that would be lovely. Um, I mean, I think it's been nice seeing the respect and admiration that people have been sort of outpouring to our medical fields, not just doctors, but nurses, people at every level in, like my wife is a pharmacist even, you know, like, a lot of people are seeing the important work that these folks do, which sometimes maybe goes unnoticed. I think a lot of us are feeling the same way about teachers right now. Those of us who have kids who have to stay home and aren't able to go to school, you know, we're again seeing the value of some of these positions that when they're, we don't have access to them, we really miss them, right? I think it'd be nice to carry on that sort of feeling of gratitude forward. And not just maybe gratitude, but also, you know, maybe finding ways to better compensate some of these people who do these very difficult and important jobs. Uh, I wrote down here, maybe it's made people value their friendship a little, friendships a little more. When you don't have easy access to your friends, um, that might be something that I think all of us will value in terms of, in the board game hobby, not being able to get together and have game nights with our regular friends. That's something that I think a lot of people are missing. And um, on that note, I think this has probably also increased the interest people have in board games. I've certainly seen an uptick in people watching Watch It Played tutorial videos. I think there's more people who are picking up games off the shelf well, not as much off the shelf, but maybe curbside or they're ordering online. And uh, then they're looking for, how do we play these games? And so I think, hopefully, maybe some people will find the hobby through this. But um, no matter what positive outcomes there might be uh, that we're seeing right now, I, I think we would all like to be on the other side of it, if possible. That's certainly my hope. But, uh, but thanks for the question, Rainer. I thought it was an in interesting one. 
All right, I'm just gonna check here to see where are, are we at time? We are three minutes <laughs> for being at time. I can't believe it. Uh, so let me just quickly try to answer a few more questions that you folks have put in the chat and then we'll try to, uh, to wrap this up. Uh, let me see. I'm going to just remove a couple of these questions that I've already answered so I can track this a little easier. Kabuki Quid, Kabuki Quid? Kabuki Kid would like to know, have you ever tried the game Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes? Have I ever? Uh, did, that, did this game make you think of that a little bit? <laughs> I love that game. It's fantastic. Uh, if you haven't played it before, one person is on an app that sort of shows a bomb with wires and other little puzzles on it. They have to communicate what they're seeing. Nobody else can see what they're seeing. Everyone else has the bomb defusal manual. And based on what that person is communicating, then then look in the manual and instruct that person about what they have to do. But it is a series of puzzles, really, in the manual. And there's a timer going, so there's a time pressure element. It's really great. Uh, the problem with the game is that it can be very, there can be a lot of pressure, high pressure. And I find I have quite a high tolerance for games with a high pressure level, and I will enjoy playing and I don't mind losing them. I don't mind losing them over and over and over again in an attempt to beat them. But I find that a lot of people I play with, they get a little burnt out from it quicker than I do. So they'll enjoy the first few levels of it. But then when it starts to get really challenging, they go, eh, I'm not sure I want to play anymore. So I don't get to play it as often as I would like to the level I would like. Uh, but that's okay. It's, it's a very good game, though. It's, it, I really like it. Jennifer Sims, uh, thank you so much for the uh, super chat. <laughs> oh, Jennifer Sims with a, uh, a little tip here. You can use tape instead of scratching instead of scratching on posters. Really? So I guess what you're saying is if you use tape, that will take off the, uh, the scratch surface? That's good to know because sometimes the scratch surface can be a little bit messy. Now this poster, when you order it, it does come with a little scratcher and pins to hang it up and a little cloth to, to clean up afterwards. But that's, uh, that's good to know, Jennifer. And a very kind uh, super chat as well from Terraform DC. Thank you, thank you for supporting this very frenetic uh, episode. It's been a little, a little bananas, honestly, um, but um, I'm glad to hear that you've been, you've been enjoying and supporting it. So Molly, Molly, oh, Molly Benu, ben, Benumbrian, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, asks, how often does the publisher need a redo? Just wonder how much work that ends up being. I try my very best to put as much work into uh, the prep side of it, the scripting, talking to the publisher in advance, going to, again, Board Game Geek and finding the questions so that I am, you know, 98% certain I have everything correct before I record everything. But sometimes I do find mistakes. Sometimes I misinterpret something. I'm trying to think. There was one recently. I can't remember which one it was. Was it Bus? It might have been Bus where there was an error and I had to reshoot it two or three scenes. Now, one thing I could do is involve the publisher at the scripting stage. I could show them the script and say, hey, is there any problems here? But I've, I've strayed away from doing that because I guess I don't want too many cooks in the kitchen. What I mean is I don't really want the publisher getting involved at that level, reading the script and going, you know, Rodney, I would move this over here. I would say it in this order. I, you know, what about changing this? I think that one of the things that I offer in Watch It Played is, uh, is a, a, a particular ability to teach games in a way that I think <laughs> is good, <laughs> even if my grammar isn't always good. And I, I want the publisher to trust me, basically. I want to have the sort of final say in, in the way things are written out. Because oftentimes I'll read the rule book and go, boy, that's not how I would have written that rule book. And so I, I'm hopefully doing something that is a little better. Again, particularly for video. And so I don't mind if the publisher comes in after the fact and goes, hey, there's a mistake here that needs to be corrected because then I'll correct it. But it keeps sort of the integrity of my vision about what the tutorial should look like intact that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Jack, you would like to know, question, why do you keep kidding yourself that these shows are only going to last? I don't know, Jackie. I don't know why I think they'll ever last an hour, but they never, they never ever do, do they? Um, very, very strange that way. But, um, well... I think this one I would like to keep uh, to an hour, but I can, you know, this phone over here is supposed to be ringing right now. You should be hearing a ringing sound, but you're not. But thankfully, 
Thankfully, I can hear it ringing. I have like, you know how like a dog can hear like a high whistle? That's, that's like me. I can hear it wanting to ring. So let me just um, see who's here. Hello? Is anyone there? Rodney. Oh, Rodney. oh it's Chaz again. How wonderful. Chaz. Yes. Oh, yes. I, it's, it's, I just, you know what? I'm sorry to interrupt your live stream again. I just wanted to call because no I had one more question for you. Okay, um, sure. Sure. Yeah. Fire away. I, I was just wondering if you have ever considered uh, growing out your facial hair. But uh, my facial hair. Uh, yeah. I actually, you might notice I haven't shaved for a couple of days. Oh. I am. Do you think it would look good if I grew it out? Oh, oh, I think it would look excellent if you grew it out like, like exactly this amount. Okay. That's a mm -hmm. little odd. I, I just, just, um, I just want to say, Chaz, and don't take offense, but it did seem earlier like you were being a little strange. Is everything okay? Like, is everything oh. all right over there? Oh, are you kidding me? Uh, everything's great now. In fact, you know what, buddy? No matter what happens, yeah. I just want to let you know, absolutely everything is going to be okay. Okay, good. For, for, for one of us. Oh, okay. Wait. What do you mean, for one of us? That's a weird thing to say. Darn it, I know what's going on here. This, oh, I'm falling for it again. Oh. I'm pretty sure he's, uh, he's trying to impersonate me again. I fall for this at least twice a year, and um, I think it's happening again. I, I'm sorry, everyone. I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to make a quick call to the... Uh, Canadian embassy in the US. I have a feeling my identity is about to be taken again. Uh, so I'm gonna have to let you all go. Thank you all for joining me for another live show and I will see you and I'll be seeing you Chaz very soon as well. Until the next episode, thanks for watching.